This is an example of a rights issue and also includes where rights are exercised. An entity owns 30,000 shares. The fair value is 2 rand 50 per share at the date of the rights issue. The 2 rand 50 therefore represents the cum rights value of the shares. Receive one right for every five shares held in terms of a rights issue. A holder of the right can purchase two shares per right at one rand 50 per share. The one rand 50 represents the exercise price in terms of the agreement. Then the entity exercises 2,000 rights. First of all, the investment in shares needs to be restated to the cum rights value at the date of the rights issue. So 30,000 shares needs to be restated to 2 rand 50, giving you a balance of 75,000 rand. In a question, you would therefore first have to do a fair value adjustment to achieve that. Now, the 75,000 rand being the existing balance in the investment in shares account needs to be split between an X rights value and the value of the rights. This is done in a valuation technique. You take the number of shares before the rights issue, the 30,000, that is valued at the cum rights value, and you're now going to split that value of 75,000. How does the valuation technique work? You ask yourself how many new shares will be issued if all rights were exercised. And that is calculated as follows. You get one right for every five shares, that will give you 30,000 divided by five, so you'll receive 6,000 rights. In terms of the agreement, you can purchase two shares per rights, so you'll end up buying 12,000 new shares. Remember, this is a valuation technique. All rights have not yet been exercised. The value, the rand value of the 12,000 new shares would be calculated at the issue price of 1 rand 50, giving you a value of 18,000. If you add up your totals and you divide the 93,000 by the 42,000 shares, it gives you a price per share of 2 rand 21, and that represents your X rights value. So the valuation technique assisted you to, to, to see what's going to happen to the 2 rand 50 cum rights value if there's no longer any rights. So your cum rights value less your X rights value gives you a value change per share. All these amounts are per share amounts. Because we are busy splitting the existing share balance of 75,000 Rand, you have to multiply this value change per share with the number of existing shares. And that will give you a Rand value of 8,700 Rand. So what happens in your T accounts? In the investment in shares account, you take a credit to the investment in rights account for the 8,700. So you de-recognize the value of the rights into its own T account, the investment in rights account. So the 8,700 is now represented by how many rights? That represents 6 thousand rights so you can calculate a rand per right. Next we now exercised 2,000 rights so let's have a look there. First of all the first thing that needs to happen is you need to de-recognize the number of rights used. You have exercised 2,000 rights so that needs to be de-recognized out of the investment in rights account at the carrying amount of those rights being the 1 rand 45. At this point, please remember your first in, first out and weighted average principles. Secondly, when you exercise rights, you also purchase new shares. So the bank entry in this instance will be as follows. You have exercised 2,000 rights. You get two shares per right, so that represents 4,000 shares. You pay 1 rand 50 for those shares being the exercise price, and that leads to a value of 6,000 rand. The reason why we bring the bank entry into the investment in rights account is to force you to keep these two balances together. 
So yes, you bring in the debit for the bank, C6,000, but you immediately take it out of the investment in rights account together with the value of the rights exercised, keeping the two values together. So eventually you end up with 8,900 debited to the investment in shares account. That 8,900 now represents the fair value of the shares purchased. It is represented by 4,000 shares and you can again calculate your rand per share. So the only reason why we bring the bank entry into the investment in rights account is to force you to keep these two amounts together. You are however allowed to record the bank entry only into the investment in shares account and only de-recognize the 2,900 from the investment in rights account. But it's very important that you remember to keep these two amounts together for purposes of calculating your new rent per share amount.